What's up, YouTube? My name's Quickie. Welcome back to the channel. Since Steve-O still isn't here. He's still in Royston. <laughs> I don't think he's coming back, you know. <laughs> he's still up in Royston at his parents with the girls and whatnot. So he's not down this weekend, which means I still can't do the stupid foot pegs. Um, I could just go ahead and make them and then go, oh, wait, well, you weren't around. I'll do my best. But I don't think he'd really appreciate that much. <laughs> so I ain't going to do that. But he wasn't around to complain about me cutting this up, which I've done a little bit more. I just need a drum sander so I can start dressing it in because it's all curvy and stuff. But he wasn't around to complain about me cutting bits off it. So I don't think it really matters that he's not here because it just means I can cut other stuff off the bike and he can't complain about it. In fact, he would say, yeah, go on, cut stuff off. That'd be fine. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. <laughs> right, so all I'm doing is I've, I've gone around and started marking stuff up that I can just get rid of, basically. Some of it I can't do because I need the frame like separated and stuff. Just on its own. I've got all the finished welding and all that sort of stuff, and dressing up and blah, 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 blah. I've got to get all that lot done. Um, but there is some stuff I can cut off. Yeah, we ain't gonna need that either. I ain't gonna be running the steering lock. Now, apart from that, it's just ugly. It's right in the middle. It's a stupid shape and it's welded something horrible. So that's all going. Um, but the other thing, it's a bit like the 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 yokes that I cleaned up. But these these fork legs, they've got. I mean, there's like a line that runs all the way through the middle of it, which ain't very nice. He managed to snap a lug off here, so that will need sorting out. And we've got these other little mounting lugs on the front, which is for the front mug guard. Well, I'm sure I'll remember him saying he wasn't going to run a front mug guard. <laughs> and if he was going to run a front mug guard, then I would need to sort that bit there out anyway. Either put the lug back on it by welding it up and dressing it out and blah, 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 or just run off with two, and that would just be stupid. So I'm cutting them off. He's not here to, he didn't complain about me cutting the oil cooler surrounding two, because he wasn't here, but he's not here again this week. Right, so there's his forks. You can see here, he's broke off a lug. Um, there should be like a little lug that comes up with two holes on there. That's just for mounting the uh, the mug guard. But he's snapped it off. Somebody's had a go at, well, I don't know what they've had a go at doing. I'm not sure if they've tried to repair it somehow. And it's come off again, but it looks like it's had some of that, um, like instant metal, you know, the putty metal stuff. That's what it looks like anyway, but that all needs to go. I need to sort that out so it's just nice and round and simple and straightforward like that. We're going to delete these lugs and then we're going to sort out all these little casting marks. So look, there's one that runs down the middle there. There's another one down here. There's a few nicks and dinks and stuff that's out of it. Um, you know, it's just, it's a bit grotty. And we tidied up like the, the oaks and stuff and they came up a tree and they just look real simple. Just all smoothed out plain looking you know that's that's all I want to do on these basically um, the other thing if you look at the fork legs they are mullered I mean they're like proper like there's a big nick out the bottom here there's loads of scratches and stuff where they've been in and out the the, the yokes because care wasn't taken and they're both in exactly the same state um, there was some burrs on the inside of the yoke that's caused all this but you know 
marks like that and scratches up the top here and go Phew! that's where the burr was and that's just wiggling it about trying to get it through the yolks so not a great deal of care was taken um <coughs> i can't really see he's on about getting them re-anodized which i get and he's probably going to have them anodized black or something like that just because it will tie in with everything else but to sort all this out because some of them are really deep really it all wants turning down um, we did have a chat with a company uh, that does all the anodizing and they can reface forks. So, you know, they've got a lathe, they can turn them down, get, you know, get rid of all these scratches and dress them up and everything else. And then they can anodize them and send them back to us. So that would be quite nice. Um, but that's not something I really want to have a go at. I haven't got a lathe anyway and something that long. You know it's going to wobble about all over the place so it's got to be done it's got to be done right the bottom bits i can sort out though so that's what i'm doing all right i might as well work on this one first <laughs> one at a time um i think all i'm going to do to start off with is just have these off and then i'll start dressing it down with whatever i've got laying around so we'll have a die grinder out. Um, so, um, yeah, whilst I'm doing this, Simon rolls. He's got the shock and he started pulling it all apart. Um, and he's finding some interesting things. Um, basically, it's supposed to be gassed. And where he, where he uh, you know, released the gas from it, it's supposed to be like 10 pounds of pressure or something in there. 10 psi i'm sure that's what he said I've, he sent some videos and pictures i'll stick them up in that so you can see what's what um there weren't 10 pounds of pressure in it <laughs> definitely not but he's had it all apart and it, the the piston and everything else is now moving um, he sent sent me like this little video, like I say, and inside it looks clean as a whistle, like all the shim stack and you know the bump stops not mangled and the shaft is all nice and clean and all that other kind of stuff. So it could just be down to it not having any gas in it, um, which kind of goes at odds with my experience of that in the past. When I was racing at Snetterton on the R6. Um, I blew a rear shock on that that bike. And it was really weird, like, what would happen is, with no gas in the shock, if you bounce on the back of the bike, go away and have a cup of tea and come back later on, it would still be bouncing up and down. So that's what I thought it would be like if, um, if there was no gas in it. But apparently it can go the other way as well, where it's just completely locked, basically. I don't think the shock has ever been serviced. It's got its original oil and everything else in it. That was from 2007, so that's all 13 years old. Um, you know, when we was doing, when we was racing that, like every, well, you'd start the season, halfway through the season, we was having suspension rebuilt top to bottom, and you would notice the difference. So, you know, it's a good thing to be doing. But yeah, it's an odd one. It could be that the, the bladder's buggered, so you gas it, and all the gas just leaves. And then you're back to sort of square one again. Um, but he's still poking about with it at the minute. He's going to get it regassed and see what it see what it's like and see if the bladder's any good. Um, and he's going to dress it up and clean it up and everything else because to do a good job, you want it all apart to be able to do that. So he might as well do that anyway. Um, but yeah, so work continues. But he's a good lad. He'll get it done. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
All right, so I'm just checking things. This is obviously the caliper bolt. That's the spacer that goes onto it. And that's what I'm trying to take it down to. Um, this front face ain't far off, but you can see we've still got voids and nastiness going on here. What I think has happened is where he snapped it off, or whoever snapped it off, they've used that, um, it's like a two-part putty that you scrunch it all together and get it all the same colour, blob it on wherever you want, and it basically goes rock hard like metal. It's like a chemical metal sort of stuff. But this is rough as hell around here. Really is. And I want to get it down to this. And I ain't got much left. So it's going to be interesting to try and get that out. Hmm. Right. I'm just using the there's a platform here where it's stiff and solid, but there's like a bendy bit in there. Um, just trying to use that to get around the curve, keep it going and keep it rocking, and that way I can keep it relatively straight and smooth. <laughs> Right, so it just takes time and patience really and any grinding and whatever sort of tools that you can find um, it's hard to tell because I've still got the black on it's not all down to bare metal but this is looking pretty good now uh, all the casting flashes are gone I've dressed out that lug that got dinked off um, And I think we're in good shape. I mean, this one I've not touched. And it's sort of round, but it ain't. That's the one that I've done. That's rounder. Um, actually, there's still a little... Where is that? messy because I've still got some of the black paint on and down to bare metal in other places and so on and so forth um, but that's just because I'm taking the least amount I possibly can off um, just to sort of get it down to where I want it to be basically um, all the casting marks that I wanted to get rid of I've gotten rid of I'm sure this stuff that he had down here was that chemical metal malarkey which is horrid but I think we are basically in. Let's just, um, what I'm gonna do is give it a quick clean up. Uh, just give it a wipe down with acetone. The paint probably won't like it, but I don't really care. Um, so we'll just give it a quick light wipe down just to get rid of my greasy paw prints. And then I'm gonna spray some primer over it. Just cause if it's all the same color, um, it's easier to see, well I find it easier to see, um, you know, if there's any imperfections in it or anything. Um, these are going to be painted, 
if there are any little nicks and scratches and stuff like that that I've not dressed out properly, the primer will basically cover it anyway. But I just want to get a sense of how good a job we've actually done here. And then I'll move on to the other one. <laughs> it's always nice when there's only one of the thing to do. Because once you've done it, you've done it. There's no, oh, I'm going to start the other one now. <laughs> One good little tip for you, I'm not teaching you anything. I'm not telling you how to do a damn thing. <laughs> However, I have found this quite helpful, especially when you're using one of these and you're trying to blend something in that's rounded. Um, the way that I do it is, is you start out with a lug like this and you want to end up with basically this. The temptation is just to have at it and go down, but the trouble is if you go too far, or you can take metal off, you can put it back on again. It ain't that easy, especially if it's cast alley and you haven't got a TIG welder. <laughs> um, so you have to kind of sneak up on it. But what I've found is if you, you start off on the lug and just keep moving it left and right, and as you're doing it, just rotate the, the part, then you're kind of putting a circumference in it anyway. But once you start getting down to the depth that you want to be, you, you obviously got to blend it all in. So what I tend to do is start off doing a narrow strip, then start rocking it. And every time I rock it, I go a little bit further, you know, past where I ground it on the last pass. Um, and then when I get right out to the edges, it's real light passes. Again, the same pressure that I've been using throughout, but you leave like this band where there's a tiny bit of paint and, you know, kind of blends up to full thick paint and you end up with a really nice curve on it but it's all blended and it's all, you know, it's, it keeps its shape rather than just uh, and ending up with a 50p for a fork. <laughs> it's only a suggestion, you don't have to do it but if you, if you go past each of your grinding marks like that on each pass um, then you stand a better chance of getting a nice finish. There you go, school's out. <laughs> Alright, they're both done. Had a coat of paint. Um, so you can see, you know, your lugs have been deleted, it's all been dressed up and everything. It's just like simple and smooth and just it hasn't got anything on there that we don't need. Um, I have gone over the I, this is just a coat of primer, it just helps to sort of even out the, the surface just so I can see is it good or is it not. I have gone over the compression adjuster, don't really care because they're getting replaced anyway. Um, if there are any little bumps and nicks and stuff like that, they will all get sorted. Like where I, I just cleaned it down with acetone, I didn't take all the paint off. So like on this one, you can see the edges of the paint flex and stuff. Put acetone on paint and it just turns to schmoo. <laughs> but at least I know they're looking good. Um, pom, pom, pom. Oh, actually, let's stick them over here. Out the way, keep them safe. There we go. Right. What else can I cut off? Right, what I'm thinking, this bracket on the front and uh, the steering lock jobby at the top, I ain't gonna need them. <laughs> we want it just to be clean and simple. So they're getting it next. <laughs> oh, this is where all my bearings fall out, isn't it? Thank you. 
Right, I've been using the tube cleaner thing, angle grinder attachment, to sort out this uh, front spin. I don't know if you can see this. What a good job that does. Really, really does. It comes up lovely. <laughs> Those things are pretty lethal, it has to be said. Um, and it eats belts for breakfast, but when it, it sort of ends up looking like that, you don't really care. <laughs> Oh look, I ruined another one. <laughs> it's got holes and all sorts in it. <laughs> She's gonna be happy with me when I get home tonight. Um, I think that's pretty much where I'm gonna leave it today. I got everything done that I could get done without Steve-O here. Um, you know, smoothing all this stuff out and dressing it up and giving it a squirt of primer and you know, just making it look nice. Just so it's all good. It's gotta happen at some point. And without him here, I might as well do it. And I did say, this channel's gonna show you basically everything. So this may not be the most exciting episode you've ever come across, but if you're doing one of these bikes yourself, you're gonna to have to do all this, and bits of it is just tedious. It takes ages. And then when you get one done, oh yeah, I've got another one to do. <laughs> that, um, I'm really pleased with the way that the steering stem came out. That beast of an attachment is awesome. I need to get some more belts for it actually, because when I come to do the frame, he's going to get used a lot. I mean, like a lot. <laughs> it really isn't the safest thing though. The, the way it's all set up, I'm a right-handed fella. And that support handle can go on either side, but you, you know, you're you going to be using it in your left hand. So that basically puts one of your hands, be it left or right, it don't really matter, one of them is gonna be right next to the belt. So if the belt ever does snap, you know, you, you're losing a digit or two or your face or something, <laughs> the health and safety folks are gonna hate it, but it does do a cracking job, so I'm gonna keep on using it. <laughs> so right, I've got my safety specs on, I'll be fine. <laughs> but anyway, um, so what's the plan now? Well, Steve-O is definitely, 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 but he said this last week, definitely gonna be here next week. <laughs> he is still looking for headers. He hasn't got a set yet. I reckon we just go with a standard set and let me chop them up. That'd be fine. That'd be absolutely fine. Just get a standard set of headers and we're in. I could work with them. But when he comes down next week, we're gonna get these sorted. I might even get a piece of alley just so just in case I'm gonna make a start on it next week, basically. So I wanna get the position of the, I reckon he's gonna to have to go about there with his dodgy knee. So I reckon that's that. The other thing I'm hoping to get back is the shock off Simon Rolls. I'm hoping he's been able to fix it. Um, I did have another message from him. He reckons it's all to do with gassing because all the mechanics of the shock are absolutely fine. There's no wear or anything else. 
So it could either be there ain't no gas in it, which we know there weren't, um, or it could be the bladder that the gas goes into is buggered, in which case we need another one. Um, but the thing is, by the time you get down to, you know, his time doing it and a service kit for all the seals and everything else, and then a new bladder and then the gas it and blah, 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 new oil and everything else, you know, you're kind of getting in the realms of just going out and finding yourself another one. So he's going to have to have a conversation with Steve. -O. They'll decide what they're going to do and they'll just let me know when they know what they're doing. <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, but if we can get the rear shock back and get that in there, then we're going to have to read all the numbers and stuff and sort out the geometry again. I don't think it's going to help. I don't think it's going to help. But at least we'll have working suspension so we can measure it properly and know what it is that we're dealing with. Yeah, that's always a good thing, isn't it? Isn't it? Or we could just guess, oh, that'll do. Four inch lift kit, spot on. <laughs> anyway, that's where I'm gonna leave it today. Um, like I say, it's probably not the most exciting episode that you've ever seen, but some of this stuff just takes ages. And I did say that you were gonna get to see everything, and this is one of those times where you're gonna get to see the not so exciting stuff. So I'm, I am sorry if you turned off halfway through it. <laughs> Well, actually, if you did, I don't really care because you're not watching this bit anyway. <laughs> but there you go. That's where I'm leaving it today. Um, thank you ever so much for joining us and for watching. Really do appreciate it. Um, everyone who's chipped in on Patreon, legends in my book. That is really, really cool. And we might even have some corking news next week. We have to wait and see on that one. But anyway, thank you ever so much for joining us. I do hope you're staying safe. And we'll see you again next time. Later.